Okay, so hello and welcome to this next part of the guide and uh, today we finally start driving as this is the part where we start tuning the fueling. So in the previous parts we have created a base map which is also important for this step but we also checked our base timing, we checked that the car starts and idles good and now we have to obviously tune fueling. What do you need for this? Well, obviously you have to have a correct base map. So a base map that is at least working and has at least a correct AFR target table because the fueling or the VE table, which we are using to calculate the fueling is using the AFR target table to calculate the correct VE value and is looking at the AFR target table together with our AFR gauge to um, see what VE value is needed to get to the correct uh, um, to the correct AFR value. So it is looking at the difference and then you have to adjust accordingly. And there are multiple methods to do this. We are first of all looking at the mm, most cost effective, solu effective solution, which would be taking logs and then using Megalog Viewer to adjust our fueling accordingly, which is also done automatically. So you don't have to do anything manually really, at least in the first part, but then you have to touch the fueling in general a bit manually as well, because you cannot rely on Megalog Viewer or Autotune to adjust the fuel correctly 100%. This some people do that but then the car is just not gonna run any good or it ha will have a lot of areas where the fuel value from one cell to another is just too great of a difference and where you have lots of high and low spots in the tables and that just does not drive good because the tables have to be as smooth as possible for the transitions so that the car drives smoothly. Obviously you can go somewhat against that by using the EGO control. So to use your Lambda value as a measure to control the VE table afterwards. So the Lambda is used to adjust fueling accordingly while you drive, but that isn't as effective as just having a correct fuel table from the beginning. Some things to note here also, if you have not put in a VE table like we discussed in the part where we created a VE table from the base map, so that it has at least like 60% at the idle, 50 to 60%, 70 to 80 at the medium RPM, medium load, and 100 to 110% VE at the high load. Um, that is something I would always recommend because then you're at least kind of in the ballpark and you have to watch out for your lambda values while you drive that your engine does not get too lean while driving so that you don't encounter any, any issues or especially on the boosted application so that you don't damage your engine, which can happen. I would also recommend always having a passenger so that the guy on the passenger seat is tuning or I don't know, let him drive and you tune the car because while it is not necessary if you use for example the the auto tune feature or something it is not necessary that you look at the laptop but it is necessary to look at the fuel gauge if the car runs too lean and so that you can for example um, quit a pull if you are doing one so uh, that you don't lean out your engine and by some instance uh, damage something. This is probably the stage where most people would damage their engine if they are not watching their AFRs closely. So how do you go on driving? Well, you would drive as you would normally do. I would suggest starting out driving normally. Don't no full throttle pulls, just up to 3000 or and like 20 to 30% throttle maybe. And uh, then see what the VE table or what the log spits out and uh, then adjust accordingly and we're gonna do that now. Okay so what we are going to do now I have plugged in my laptop and 
I will just start a log. I'm gonna show you the AFR and VE table I have used before. Again, you can use the one you have created uh, with the base map, which I showed in part four, I think, or somewhat in, in that neighborhood. Uh, so that's the VE table. And there is the AFR target table. The AFR target table is important because, as I said, that's, uh, that's the table that the ECU goes off of for the correct, uh, co correct values. So, and then I will show a, the sensor inputs. I will show AFR gauge, the target AFR. So this is the target AFR that the AFR, uh, that the target AFR map dictates. So that's the AFR value that the ECU tries to achieve while adjusting or while, um, or should achieve. Although we are only capturing now, I'm going to start a log. I'm just going to call it three because I did two logs before, save. And now it is logging. You can also see that in the bottom here, it says data logging. And I have set my laptop to, so that if I shut it, it still is on and then we can just drive. We'll have it take a look at our air fuel ratio so that it doesn't get too lean, as I said. And yeah, everything else, again, we're gonna just drive normally without too much. Again, your car should start because we already went over that. And somewhat okay we are pretty close at low loads if you can see that in the in the uh, AFR gauge so we'll just start slowly and just use varying loads it doesn't really make sense to drive at one load at uh, the whole time so because obviously you are only using one cell then in the whole VE table but if you vary your loads then you have the ability to touch more cells than well when you would just drive at one speed basically so okay we notice that we are in this we are very very rich so we are at like probably AFR tens we definitely this would definitely be adjusted down, but we can later see that in Megalog Viewer as well. There's traffic. If we see that we aren't running too lean, we obviously can give it some more throttle. That doesn't really hurt it because we see that the car isn't running too lean. We're just seeing that at the moment it's rather running too rich. But it's better to run too rich than too lean and to adjust it later. Are giving it quite a bit of load here because I see on my gauges that I'm running quite rich so it's not that big of a deal. On a boosted application you obviously want to be a bit more careful to go into boost and maybe just stay in 
uh, vacuum and tune part throttle and uh, if that is matching to what was already set kind of so that it didn't adjust like 20% or whatever then you can start giving it some boost and look at the gauge if the values there are also correct. So we're at wide open throttle at low RPM and we can see it's even too rich here. And uh, the car is on some instances so rich that you can even smell it, so uh, yeah. It's not too bad if it runs like this, but I wouldn't recommend it because too much fuel can actually wash away the oil film on the cylinder walls. So you don't want to drive around like this for a long time and just for tuning purposes, where it's like maybe 10 kilometers or something until you have it dialed in. And then, um, yeah, just eliminate those really rich spots. Okay, so we're gonna stop here. I'm gonna pull out the laptop again and turn off the car. So under data logging, stop. And then we open Megalog Viewer, select file, open, number three. And there you can see, obviously we started our log quite early, so we are seeing quite a bit before we actually drove, but then here we have our log and there we can select different parameters we would use. So for example, on the graph two, we have AFR and target AFR. So that would be what the ECU now uses to calculate the difference. And we see, for example, in this where I am right now, we are running um, right now too rich. So we are targeting 14.7 AFR and we are running at 13.2, which would be a bit too rich. But so in theory, we could do that now manually by looking at the RPM, looking at what KPA we're at and adjusting man manually. But that's really not the not what we're aiming for because that would be just way too complicated and would take way too long. Okay, and then we click on open tune on the right here to let that, as I said, it would be too difficult or too time consuming to do that manually. So we are going to let a Megalog viewer do that. And we select our tune here. Okay. And then we have our VE table in Megalog Viewer, and then we can click on VE Analyze. Click on VE Analyze. Good. You could select the uh, log time start and uh, the time, sorry, the minimum time and maximum time. We're just gonna do log start to log end, which is fine. Run analysis, and then it's gonna analyze everything, how the VE table matches to what it should be according to the difference in the VE, uh, VE values. And then you can see live that it is changing the values right here. And then it says, it gives me a summary of what has changed. Total table cells, 256, yeah, okay, that's normal. C cells changed or cells analyzed, 128. So 50% of the table has been analyzed in total and the values that were changed were 122 that were altered more than 0 0.5. Obviously we only have in 1% values, so uh, 122 is correct. And uh, there were some cells that were changed quite heavily. So for example, on our mid-range here it was around 70 and then it's now at about 50 to whatever 55 and so on okay then we click on accept new F afr table a uh, new table and then we click save tune and then open that tune again uh, 
and then we say send current tuners to your settings and then we have imported our VE table that we just or was just changed. So the issue we have now is that you can see our table is quite well it's not very smooth. We can see that most of the stuff that was changed was this here so that's pretty low. So we see that this was very low so we can kind of say that this is probably also going to be quite a bit lower so like from I'd say from here to about here so we are going to lower that by like I'd say 10% and then just smooth that out a bit and smooth that out a bit and we see that the 86 and 81 was changed quite drastically so we know that even under wide open throttle it needs less fuel so we are also going to smooth that out a bit so that it has a bit less fuel under wide open throttle and do the same like here so that we just get a smoother table in general we don't want any low or high spots as i said before and another thing is i would also always recommend getting the idle ones the idle cells that you run on idle like from for example 500 to 1500 rpm and from like 40 to 20 kpa should be all around the same value because if it is not the idle is going to uh, oscillate probably and you're not going to have a very stable idle okay so that's basically how it is done i am going to do this again now so we are going to drive again and i may run it differently for maybe a bit more rpm because obviously we did not reach full rpm yet and then we do the same thing basically again and you can do that a few times and um, if you think you are finished just do a log again and look at how far you are off from the uh, target AFR, AFR value from your actual AFR value. If that distance is really small and just flickering like a bit above and below, that's fine. Then we would just do the last, probably the last a few percent because it's fluctuating. It has to be fluctuating because the environment is different always. You can do that with a lambda control, which we are going to look at uh, in a different video. But let's do that the same time or the same way again. So again, click on start logging. We're gonna call it four now. As you can see now already, our AFR values should be closer to what uh, they are supposed to do. So closer, the actual AFR is supposed to be closer to the target AFR which obviously is correct because we are running at about 13.5 to 14 as well before we were at some times also running at like 10 to 11 so it's already just because we went a few miles or a few kilometers it's already a lot better
Okay, so that's okay. So again, we start uh, stop the log, and we do the same pr procedure again. I did some wide open throttle pulls now as well, and then we have, as I said, our other log. We do the same thing again. So we use V analyze. So I'm going to change maximum value change. Uh, no, okay. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm gonna do run analysis. Should be more, yeah. It saw more in the wide open throttle cells, so we have seen quite a bit more now. So on wide open throttle, it actually made it a bit more rich because we were running at like 7k RPM, we were running quite lean, and so it made it a bit richer. And you could also see that we changed 176 cells now, which is a bit more cells, but we the only max change was 19.3. And obviously you have to do this quite a few times. I would suggest at least five times and maybe do a bit longer drives than I did. And um, after five times or so, your differences should become lower and your tables should become closer or your actual AFR should become closer to the target AFR and your tuning for fuel could be done this way. And then we can do the same smoothing that we have done before as well. We can do on this tune. We'll say new settings. Yep, send current tuner studio settings. And then on our VE table, we have the new table. So again, we would be doing some smoothing here. The 110, I would be smoothing to this because that adjusted it higher. So I would maybe even put 110 in here and smooth that down lower a bit because maybe on 100 kPa, uh, this would be a bit different And here. And that's basically how you do it. Again, as I said, you have to do that multiple times to get that working correctly and to get it really done. But, um, and you have to do some work manually. It can't do everything automatically. That's with this as well as with the auto-tune. I'm going to separately, separately explain the auto-tune again because that's something completely different that works similarly, but has to be adjusted too. So, yeah, it's worth doing another video for where I will explain that. Otherwise, that's it for the fuel tuning with the Megalog Viewer and the free version of uh, Tuner Studio. Again, if you need any tips or help or whatever in tuning your car or whatever, just let me know. Send me a DM on Instagram or whatever, and um, then I will be able to help you out. Otherwise, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.